to start off with, if you wouldn't mind uh, just telling me in your own words what it is that you do uh, within your church, how you'd identify your role in your church in Pakistan. Okay. Well, I pastor an independent church in Karachi, um, and the church is primarily aimed to uh, reach out to the Pakistani people and to um, share with them what Christianity is all about without the trappings that sometimes cultures uh, give to Christianity and to somehow to make Christ relevant to a Pakistani uh, who has to live life in Pakistan in difficult circumstances uh, what, what, what does Christ mean to him and we try to invite people from a wider perspective, wider backgrounds, to come and join us. That, that's what I do. I also I'm as a, I act as a chaplain too, uh, but that's on a very small basis. I'm mainly an administrator and a director, um, directing uh, what we study, what we learn together, doing some of the teaching myself, and others also inviting others to come and do the teaching also. So. How is it that you came to be Christian in Pakistan, which is a very Muslim-dominated country? Well, uh, in Pakistan, everybody is known by a religion. And I was born in a, um, a Christian family. And when I say Christian, it's widely Christian, because uh, if you're not Muslim, you're either a Christian or Hindu or something like that. Um, and. Um, and my family were church goers, they'd go to church, but uh, uh, anything to do with Christ or what he meant, means to them, they, they had not much knowledge. So they would go through the form of it. Uh, it was only very late in life, as I started studying uh, the scriptures, that I understood what it means to be a Christian. And it was only at the age of 21 that I actually did become a Christian in the real sense of the word. Um, when you say the real sense of the word, is that uh, sort of uh, an American Baptist type of uh, born again idea? Or is it uh, informal, that's when you think you understood it? I think it's more in terms of beginning a discipleship. Uh, Christianity in, in the scriptures was, was known as people of the way. And I began to walk this journey uh, in the way. At the age of 21, um, I think for me conversion came as I went along and, and, and keep going along. Uh, true, there was a crisis point in my life when I understood that Christ had died for me personally. Um, and But but it, it kept on going uh, from that point on and, and is still going on uh, 30 years later. So to you, what is it like being... Christian. Uh, Pakistan, I think, is just over 1% Christian, uh, the vast majority Muslim. Uh, how do you find being the minority? I guess there are two sides to, to, to that question. Number one is this, that I'm, I'm grateful that, I'm, uh, that I live uh, in a country where the majority religion is other than Christianity. Because you learn to look at Christianity and you learn to appreciate Christianity in a way that people who live in, let's say, a Christian country or, or, or a country that has been influenced uh, by Christianity uh, in a totally different way. And so, so that has been a great advantage to me. Uh, my faith has not been something that I mentally have absorbed, but it's something that I really believe. It's something that's, that's deep within my heart. Uh, and, 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 and the more I live in Pakistan, the more I realize that uh, for Pakistan and for Pakistanis, there is no other answer but Christ. There is no other answer uh, to their problems. That does not mean that their poverty and other things will vanish as they become Christians, but it, it does mean that it will deal with so many dysfunctional uh, issues that occur uh, in families in Pakistan. So that has been one side of it, but being a minority also has brought with it difficulties, um, especially when you are reminded on a day-to-day -day basis as you meet uh, fellow Pakistanis 
and as religion, the subject of religion comes up, that you're all, they almost assume that you're second class or that your, your religion actually is a bit outdated. Their religion is the latest one. Uh, and of course, with, with the laws, the blasphemy laws and all these laws, there's not much you can say uh, or, or to have a discussion because you can easily be uh, and get into much trouble as, as the newspapers have informed you over these years. You talk obviously about uh, Christ being the way to solve quite a few of the problems faced by Pakistanis. Uh, how does it make you feel having that knowledge uh, and not being able to implement it for everyone in your country? I think at, 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 at one sense, there, there, at one level, there's a sense of helplessness. There's, there's helplessness because you see these teeming millions of people who, as I said earlier, in, in many ways are very sincere and in many ways want to know God, in many ways want to understand God better and yet um, in, 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 are blinded to, to who God really is and there's nothing you can do to remove the blindness. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a spiritual problem and all you are left to is to go back to God, to, to plead with God, to pray to God uh, that there will be a change in, in the hearts of men and women uh, in a land like Pakistan with 170 million people or more. Mm -hmm. uh, you are helpless. There's, there's, there's no trick you can do. Now, obviously, you are a Christian. Uh, do you have a specific denomination uh, that you identify with? I think that we would broadly follow um, uh, an evangelical um, faith and a statement of faith. Um, uh, we certainly are people that believe that that you do not inherit uh, your religion, but that you've got to make a personal choice about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. How and how that happens or the logistics of how that happens is different for different people. Uh, and, and we would seek uh, to uh, encourage people uh, to, to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Obviously you say you're an evangelical church um, and obviously there are quite a few different evangelical churches. I'll don't want to simply have evangelical out there and that be it because people might misunderstand what that means. What other core practices and beliefs do you have? An example of a core belief or core practice would be uh, the Catholic Mass. Are there any practices and beliefs like that that you feel set you slightly apart from other Christians? I would say that if, if we're looking at two broad uh, groupings within the Christian faith being the Catholics and the Protestants we would we would align ourselves with the Protestant side of things and therefore things that are common to uh, pr the Protestant faith uh, w would be common to us. Sure there are differences there are uh, there are things where because we are reaching out to a group that hasn't that uh, don't uh, have never uh, become Christian in any sort of way so therefore we would encourage them to be baptized and we would encourage them to take part in the Lord's Supper and uh, at the same time we believe that God has given um, His Church gifts that can be used uh, for, the, um, for, for the benefit of others and for the building up of others and so we would follow that line too. Obviously your appearance on camera is very hidden. Uh, you are appearing to us in a very silhouetted fashion, um, hiding your identity. Could you explain why it is you wished to be portrayed in this way? Yes. As I said earlier, you see, people can look at all that I have said. Um, I know you might say, well, how can they think that? But people do think that way. They're not all educated in a Western manner. And this could be interpreted as something that of me speaking against Pakistan or against Islam, uh, and and they could react violently. Now it's not only reacting violently towards me, 
uh, I, I'm a family man and I also am involved with the church and a lot of these repercussions, negative repercussions or violent repercussions uh, by somebody who thinks that uh, it's his duty, it's his religious duty to, to silence somebody who's spoken against them or silence people who are linked with somebody who's spoken to them, uh, against them uh, it, it becomes his religious duty to do that and so I want to yes, I, I want to also protect myself but I also am linked uh, with other people and I want to protect them and it's that reason it, it, and that's the reason why you see uh, well you don't see me 